is David Weedle and I work with Second Impression Theatre Company and the show we're doing this year in the Brighton Fringe is called The Spy and the Femme Fatale and directed by myself. Uh, I've been doing shows in the Brighton Fringe for the past 15 years now and uh, then taking them elsewhere in the region, very often to London, so this one will probably go to London after doing Brighton. Hello? Hello there. What the? What are you doing? Well, I've just had my bath. What? Well, when I came down, you were sleeping, so I just went ahead and had my bath. You said it was alright, no? Uh, no, I, I just can't believe I nodded off like that. It must have been the shots I had the pub earlier. It is not against the law to have a nice time, yes? Don't beat yourself up over it. No, you're right. It's just not the sort of thing that I normally do. <laughs> so, what is thing you normally do? Well, uh, you could say, in a word, uh, uh, work. I'm a bloody workaholic. Or so I keep being told. <laughs> well, that's not good for you to work so much. Sometimes you just have to chill out. Let's go. Relax. I can be told that as well. Then it must be true. Maybe. The, the inspiration for the play was very much uh, the topical events that have happened in the media in the past 12 months. Uh, there have been a couple of very high profile cases. Uh, one of a, of quite a... Um, in fact, a very intelligent guy who uh, actually spent his whole life computer programming and hacking and doing various things, uh, but lacked perhaps arguably certain social skills and was even verging possibly on Asperger's syndrome. So we were just aware that um, you know MI6 are having to employ people now that they would never previously have had to sort of take on. At the same time, there was another uh, particular character, whose name I won't uh, mention here, but who uh, was very much known as a femme fatale spy. She was uh, very high profile, uh, lived in the UK, moved to America, spied there for about 12 years, and then uh, was deported. And, uh, so the whole um, question around the play is, what if these two characters had met in real life? And, uh, that brings up all sorts of humour and, uh, and uh, uh, some dark uh, issues as well. But uh, you'd expect that, anything about espionage, you'd expect to be a little bit dark, wouldn't you, I think? So, what do we do now, eh? It is time for the bed, no? No, I, I, I mean, yes, I mean, um, maybe, uh, feel free. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, oh good, I'll show you where the spare room is. Kind of you. You're a good person. Oh, no, I'm not. Not really. Uh, not at all, in fact. <laughs> then you show me the way to the bedroom? Uh, yeah, yeah. I must go to the bed. Yes, of course. I, I, you, you, you've lost your gown. Sorry? Your gown, it seems, will um, sit off. <laughs> I did not notice. <laughs> stupid of me. No, no, not stupid, just um um accidental. <laughs> yes. As you say, accidental. Well, it was important for me to get the culture of MI6 round about right because uh, uh, I wanted some authenticity. And particularly I wanted to see if there were any moments of comedy that could be put into what is effectively a dark subject. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be able to spend a little time with somebody who was a former MI6 operative. Uh, and I should stress, we didn't talk about anything operational. But I was very interested in just the culture, because it seems so much that uh, these guys are serious and it's, you know, it's all down the, the middle of the road. And I, th I wanted to ask and find out just, you know, was there room for humour? And thank, thank God he said, yes, there, there, there is at times, you know. And, and that, that was allowed me, uh, as a writer, some sort of scope, uh, 
within the confines of the sort of things he shared with me. So that was very useful. The bedroom you were going to show me the way, no? Of course. Yes, yes, of course. No. Then which is the way? It's through that first door on the left. Wait, right. you coming too? What? You're coming to the bed also. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Um, no, I, I mean, yes, I mean, I, no. I had to work. Uh, very tight deadlines. Very tight, tight deadlines, you see. Okay. But, if you change your mind, you know where to find me, no? No. I, 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 I mean, yes. I, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, no, thank you. Must work. Tight deadlines. Top priority. Good night, English man. Yes. Good night. The characters are very specific. Um, there's no, there's no question mark over who they are, and so we were, we were looking for particular people, and we were very fortunate in this town of rich variety and diversity to find the people we needed. Yeah, the show is um, in the Fringe from the 16th to the 20th of May, and it's uh, at the um, uh, the Friends Meeting House in Ship Street, and it's on at nine o'clock each evening.